In the last section, we started working on our first React component. Remember, a component is something that produces some amount of text or content that we can render on the screen of our mobile device. We're going to continue working on this component in this section as well. As I said previously, I'm a big fan of understanding every single line of code that we put into our code editor. So as we continue through the course, we're going to have a lot of long discussions about every piece of code, just like we did in the last section. But as we cover each topic, we'll significantly speed up the pace. One of my favorite aspects of React is that the library is just has a tiny API. There's not a lot of ways to work with it. So once you learn those ways, you can make some pretty awesome apps without worrying about a whole bunch of complexity. Anyways, just a real quick aside. So step two on our three-part journey of making our first component is to actually create the component itself. We've already imported some amount of code to help create it, and now we need to actually make the component. Remember, the component is an object that produces something that can be placed on the screen of our mobile device. So def to define a component, we write out a JavaScript function. This function must return some object that describes what it should look like on our device. So we're going to write out our first component, and it's going to be a function. We're going to call this function app. Because we called it app right here, we will refer to it as the app component for our device. Next, we're going to add a little bit of code in here that is going to look a little strange, but we'll discuss its purpose immediately. Okay? So we'll write out return, and I'm going to place some uh, parentheses. And then in between those two parentheses right here, we'll write what looks like HTML. I'm going to use what we we'll refer to as the text tag. And then inside of that text tag, I'm going to place the, just the content some text right here. So let's now stop. <laughs> Again, you know, we're going to be writing a lot of just single lines of code and then talking about what they do. Let's talk about what is happening right here. So this bit of code tells React Native that we want to render some text to the screen of our device. But you know, that's not the weird part here. The weird part is that this certainly looks like HTML that is being written inside of our JavaScript, right? We've got HTML looking tags right here. So you might be thinking, Stephen, you know, why are we writing HTML in our JavaScript? Our mobile device isn't even rendering HTML. And that's totally correct. We are not writing HTML here. We are instead writing a dialect of JavaScript called JSX. JSX is an extension to the JavaScript language that is used to write React components. In practice, JSX follows the same semantics of HTML. We have opening and closing tags. So we have opening and closing. And the name of the text is used within a set of brackets. Finally, some content is placed between the opening and closing tag. When we place one tag inside of another, we refer to that as nesting. Or if we place some text within a tag, we also refer to this as nesting some content in here. We'll be using JSX throughout this course, as it is our one and only way to communicate with React Native to, about how, what we want our app to look like on the screen of the mobile device. So the last thing I want to mention here about JSX is that even though it looks like HTML, it is still JavaScript that we're writing. JSX exists only to make our lives easier as a developer. It's really just syntactic sugar to make our code a little bit more legible. To prove this to you, I'm going to open up my browser, and I'm going to navigate to babbeljs.io. Babbel is a tool that takes JSX and turns it into normal JavaScript. So up at the top center here, and click on Try It Out, and this will take us to the Babbel REPL. So if we place some amount of JSX on the left-hand side, it will turn it into raw JavaScript on the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side is the JSX that we might write inside of a component, and on the right-hand side is the compiled JavaScript that is actually what is being executed on our mobile device. Notice how, in this case, I've already got some amount of JSX on the screen. I have a single text tag, and within that, I've got several other text tags. And when this all gets converted into JSX, it turns in a into a series of calls to react.createElement. So this is like the big surprise here. JSX is really just a mask over normal function calls. As I said earlier, we use JSX just to make our lives easier. So even though you know, it 
you might think to yourself, well, why don't we just write a series of react.createElement calls? And the answer to that is that we, as we start to get more tags on the screen, you know, as we add more tags to our component, it starts to turn it into a big nest of function calls. So the authors of the React library realized, well, nobody really wants to write a whole bunch of calls, of function calls to react.createElement. It's a lot easier to read a whole bunch of nested HTML or you know, what looks like HTML over here on the left-hand side. So that is the sole purpose of JSX, is just to make the code that we're working with appear a little bit more legible on the screen. Okay, so let's do a wrap up here. In this, in this section, we wrote our first component. A component is a JavaScript function that returns some amount of JSX. In turn, JSX is a dialect of JavaScript that tells React Native what content we want to show on the screen. In this case, we created a text tag and inside that text tag, we placed you know, just the string some text, which presumably is going to tell React Native to render like you know, just this text on the screen. So let's continue in the next section and figure out how to render this component on our device or how to make it appear on the screen of our device.